organised and it's, it's been a fantastic uh, couple of days so far and um, we're here at the Park Royal Pickering um, and this is an incredible example of green infrastructure and it's, um, it's beautiful and Jerry, that's why I wanted to have a quick chat with you about it and get your thoughts on, on green infrastructure or living infrastructure, as well, I, I like to call it. At this and stage, we should mention to people that yeah. we've, we've got a, a big festival going yeah, on next so we're, door. We're so we're, loud. we're part of Pink Dot 10 Singapore, the Gay and Lesbian <laughs> okay. Festival yeah, that's or right, Singapore, yeah. and it's in its 10th year. 10th and year. Um, I was really hoping to just pop across there and say hello, but you've got to be a Singaporean to okay. get in. Singaporeans I, I've only. never been to a festival where you have to use passport control to get through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. Well, oh. well, we can see it from up here anyway, so the joke's on them. <laughs> Green infrastructure, of course, is what I um, am passionate about, and vertical gardening and uh, bringing greenery into our spaces. We spend a lot of time, and uh, of course, this is an incredible example of um, it, of living infrastructure and, and so much greenery jam-packed in here and um, I think it has a lot of potential and it, what's your thoughts on the potential it has to help enhance the quality of life for people living in, in cities and as uh, we move into the future and a uh, place like Brisbane even you know what, well, what can they learn from a place like this well I think I think everybody needs to have best case examples yeah. um, otherwise people have only just got the theory and and here around us, people have invested a vast amount of money into the Park Royal on Pickering mm. to, to prove how sustainable hospitality can actually be. Right. Yep. And they've invested so much money. It's going to be 25 years before they actually return a profit uh -huh. on uh -huh. that investment. Yep. Oh, here are our drinks. Oh, that's right on cue. There you Thank go. You. I think Thank that's you. your one. Yep, that's mine. Thank you so much. It is. People find it hard sometimes to see the value in investing in horticulture and in plant life and, and doing what they've done here. So I guess what would, um, you know, some of the biggest incentives to, and some of the uh, best, some of the best incentives and some of the biggest returns that people would see from investing in uh, a project like this, like well, I what think, they've done here. I think in a place like this, I, I actually gave a talk to the Accor Hotel Group in South East and Queensland only last week. Yeah. And what I was explaining to them as part of the visitor experience, um, a hotel, even if it doesn't have a garden, yeah. can have interesting flower displays. Mm -hmm. And so that is a, an experience with nature. And you can expand on those experiences with nature when you're staying somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that affects the mood and the whole experience of being in a place. Yeah. So, um, for example, here we have wonderful hanging gardens. Uh, we've got a modern landscape. So the first thing you see is something which is distinctly different visually. The gardens are all around us. So whatever room you're in, you have a green experience in the heart of a really urban part of the world. So that effect of green um, is calming. Uh, you cannot escape foliage. Mind you, you're in the tropics, yeah, and right. wherever they can, they've saved all the, the rainwater that falls on this property. They store it underneath in reservoirs, and they use it to, to irrigate the gardens. So they're yep. conserving a huge amount of water yeah. by doing this. Otherwise, it would have go into the stormwater system. And there's all sorts of other things that they've done, small things that they've done around the hotel to encourage recycling and best practice. Right. But yeah. I think the package of this hotel is that it pushes the boundaries. They've, they've improved the streetscape around here. It's not just sitting inside a, a street. Yeah. They've built out into the street. Well, even so the park that's hosting this festival at the moment, creating this atmosphere that we can hear in the background. That's all connected to, That's it. I guess, the vision of it. That's it. This. And it's not just low-grade greenery either. It's high-quality greenery. Mm. They've headhunted the, the, the head gardener here from Singapore Botanic Gardens. Right, yeah. So again, they, they've affirmed that plant life is, is more than just a passing thing. Yeah. It's not just a token. They, they've really embraced it yeah. in a way. And when you see it, um, 
it's a wow landscape. It is. You know, yeah. from the moment you arrive, you realise you're stepping out of a normal sort of holiday experience into this particular hotel experience. Yes. It is an incredible experience. You're just here. You only need to be here down in this um, section to feel like you're so immersed in, in uh, the Singapore experience. Just around the corner, you can pop into a little kitchen garden as well. Yeah. Where right. you can ex you, you can see some of the stuff which will end up being yeah. served to guests okay. downstairs. So there's around there, tomorrow's yeah. Yeah. garnish I saw, I've is seen here. That. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, they got a few herbs that I've seen in your garden. I think as well. Yeah. So what, what about you know when we start looking at what a city like Brisbane can learn from a place like this? Do you think it'll be far off before we start seeing hotels um, becoming to this? You know, adopting this sort of grand scale of. Um, approach to bringing nature and I guess I guess the the environment in Brisbane is is different to the environment yeah. in Singapore yeah um, Singapore has ever since I've known it since 1982 when I first came here they had a very grand long-term plan yeah. and the original plan was for Singapore to be a garden city yeah. they they realized the value of trees in regulating the temperature of a city, greening the environment, making people feel happy, helping to improve health. So it, it ticked a number of initiatives which the government wanted to, to achieve. That was 40 years ago. They, they achieved the Garden City and now when they've renewed the plan they want to create a, a Garden City within a garden. Yeah, so they're expanding a even further on it. And so what they've got that Brisbane doesn't have is a long-term vision. Right, yeah. Um, they've also encompassed conservation of trees, landscapes, green and greenery. They put a much higher value on it. So in Brisbane, you'll go around, you'll find lots of suburbs with inadequate tree coverage, um, which are quite hot. Um, whereas in Singapore, everywhere, they've gone around to make sure that everywhere that needs trees has had trees planted. Um, Singapore has dealt with its weed problem, whereas in Brisbane they're still struggling. So I think an example like this could be a real benchmark in Brisbane because it would go further than Brisbane currently goes. And, and I think that those are the two diff differences. And yeah. Brisbane has yet to make the commitment well, they, they say we, we love Brisbane and yeah, that we yeah, are yeah. becoming more sustainable. Yeah. But at what rate are we becoming more sustainable? Right, and in yeah. comparison with other cities, how well are we faring? You see, we don't benchmark ourselves with other people. Yeah, yeah. So we don't have to try quite so hard in Brisbane to do what everybody has to do here in Singapore. Right. When I was running Sydney Botanic Gardens, and we were talking about how can we be a better botanic garden? How can we engage the public in appreciating the value of plants, plant conservation, and horticulture in general? I used to say, well, we can look to Singapore. Right. Use them as an example of what can be achieved. Well, it's incredible to be here and to be um, on this tour with you. So I, I just want to say thank you. It's, it's been um, incredible learning. Uh, to see the city through your eyes has been great. So, and thanks for taking the, the time to do this interview. Uh, well, before we go, yep. the most important thing for me yeah. about your participation in this trip yeah. was the way you reacted yesterday when we went into the cloud forest dome yeah. at Gardens by the Bay. Because there, there, there are two things, the two things that came together there. Yeah. Firstly, yeah. Gardens by the Bay is an example of how a country can build an entire segment of tourism. Mm -hmm. They have created an international tourist draw card in Gardens by the Bay. Mm -hmm. They're two of the largest single span glass houses on earth right. and they are making a small fortune for the government right. by bringing people in. Right. And um, I can understand why. So, so I wanted visual. to share that with you yeah. and everybody else that came on the trip. Yep. Because there's that wow factor. Yeah, definitely. Yep. But you can never really guarantee how people will react to it. Yeah. Until I saw you go in there and I just thought, what do you think? <laughs> do, you, do you like the vertical gardens yeah. in here? Because 
they're pretty good vertical guards. They're, they're the best. And vertical just seeing you seen. just gobsmacked and just wanting to soak up as much, as much of that as you could, mm. that for me was why I, I do these tours. Right, yeah, yeah. Because a lot in gardening is about experiencing things. Mm. I can tell people how wonderful certain aspects of Singapore life can be. Yeah. But until you're here in the heat and the humidity, you're in the experience of the tropics, yeah. seeing how world-class horticulture can be, what an emotional thing it can be. If you had an emotional right. experience it was yesterday. Like an emotional response to what I was seeing and experiencing. You could see so many other people having the same experience all around me. Everyone was gobsmacked. You could, you could see people oh, reacting yes. and see yes. people emotionally moved. And that's when I was studying my um, de degree in sustainability. That's what I, I saw as being the key. People need to have these emotional responses where they realize how important, how beautiful and incredible nature is and then want to do more to try and protect it. And that they seem like the education side that they've got set up there as well is fantastic. Yes. Yes. Um, not only just having that emotional response, but explaining you know, yes. ways that people can then go out and use that emotion to do something positive for the environment. That's it. Yeah. They, they use emotion to open up your mind, yeah. and then they teach you something while you're receptive, and you go away changed by the experience. Yeah. And that is exactly why doing this, this simple little thing, anybody can come to Singapore. It's you know, seven hours by air. It's not terribly expensive, but you can see what can be achieved and the power of horticulture, the power of gardening for making society and individuals better for having had the experience. But you have to experience it because it's a tangible thing. It's not right. something you learn in a university sure, that's or right. necessarily yeah. even on a gardening program. You have to get out there, get your hands dirty and smell the roses. <laughs> but what, what do you think it will happen with this tour in, in the future? You know, well, where, do you see, where would you like to see it? Well, look, I think, this, I think this tour will repeat yep. because the Singapore Garden Festival is an important event. Yeah, uh, which in, in, in Australia, yeah. we only have two major gardening festivals. That's all we have. Yep. One is the Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show. The other one is the Queensland Garden Expo. That's all we have. Yeah. And for a nation of gardeners, and Australia is a nation of gardeners, um, the next best thing is the Singapore Garden Festival. Yeah. So coming over here is a way of exciting people, uh, giving you new ways of doing things, seeing things, seeing new plants, all the stuff that we need to feed our imagination and, and give us an idea of what we might be able to do better as gardeners as well. So sure, yeah. that's, that, that'll be the draw card for the next tour. Right. Yep. But as a person, I love knowing how things work. You know, so seeing how the gardens at this hotel are managed, how they operate them. That's the sort of thing that I'd like to improve on for the next trip here. Uh, right, yes, maybe be... maybe get a little bit of a behind the scenes tour of Singapore Botanic Gardens yep. and see something which ordinary tourists don't actually sure. get to see. Yeah, that'd be exciting. Because I, I yeah. love that. Yep. You know, it's yep. lovely eating food, but I like to see what's going on in the kitchen That's as right. well. Yeah, I'm the same. So yeah. Yeah. I'll be on the next tour, I think. <laughs> Good on you. Well, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Looking forward to happy gardening. More gardening adventures. <laughs> and happy pink dot ten. Yeah, happy pink dot ten. <laughs> <laughs>